Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at weatherproofing your projects. Now, I have built a lot of automotive projects for troubleshooting, like my coil pack tester. So I'm underneath the hood of my car while it's raining or snowing, or if I'm working on a boat, I have salt spray. So there has to be a way that we could protect our projects. So the first thing we can do, we get a weatherproof case, like this one here. It's made out of plastic. It has two halves, and there's no ring around the edge to keep water out. And I don't like drilling any holes into the box because that's just another source of water intrusion. So I get a case with a, with a clear plastic top. So I can monitor LEDs, I can put a display in there. But we have one problem, how do we power up the unit without a power switch? I don't want to put any switches, any drill any holes for switches. So I incorporated an impact detector. It's actually a piezo speaker, which is uh, epoxy to the bottom of the case. So it will detect an impact, so if I tap it say on the edge of my bench here, it's powered up, you can see my power LED coming on. So now the microcontroller has control, so if I'm, get, if I'm getting input, like say on my coil pack tester, as long as I'm getting input, it will keep power on. But when it goes idle for a certain amount of time, it will time out. And in this particular case, uh, the second LED will blink five times uh, before it times out. So there she's blinking, and after five times it's going to power down. Now it's powered down the circuit, and there is no current uh, coming out of the battery. It's actually completely zero current. So the battery life will be uh, very long. So now to start it up again, just give it a tap. And she comes on again. Okay, I've taken off the plastic cover of my weatherproof enclosure. And you can see a ridge that goes around the edge of the box. And that meets up with the top cover with the O-ring. You can see the O-ring there. So it's, it's connected together with four bolts. Now these bolts are plastic, so they won't rust or corrode. And if any water accumulates around the head of the bolt, it's going to go through the threads, and eventually it's going to drain out the bottom. There's holes in the bottom, and the water will just drain out. Now if you have to put a switch, if you have to drill a hole into this case uh, for a switch, I would go for a, for a vandal-proof switch like this. It's, it's one piece. It's one piece construction, so no water could get in. There's no moving parts. And this, this switch is actually compatible to my impact detector. So it's, it's a, a perfect match. You just have to drill a hole, and there's actually an O-ring on the switch. So you drill a hole, put it on the case, and then you could have a switch. But I don't recommend a switch. I would rather go with my impact detector, which is very easy to do. And you could hit it and bang it, do it, and, and it won't come on, but you have to give it a good wrap, and then she'll come on and power up the circuit. Okay, here's the circuit on my breadboard, so we could check it out. So here's my piezo speaker trigger, and my nano. Now when the circuit is off, there is no current, so the microcontroller is off, so there's no smarts. So we have to depend on the piezo uh, trigger to actually generate a voltage to turn on the microcontroller. So when I hit or when I flex my piezo speaker, it puts out an AC voltage. And that's going to be fed into a voltage doubler, and it's going to charge up this capacitor, which is going to turn on this FET momentarily to trigger the, the microcontroller and once the microcontroller comes on it will turn on itself in a feedback loop. So if I, if I tap the piezo speaker we can trigger it. You can see the power is on, LED comes on. So now the microcontroller has control and it turned on itself and after an idle time of 20 seconds uh, this LED will blink uh, then the microcontroller will shut off the power and it will go back to zero current again. So that's how our circuit works and after she powers off, I'll actually show how much, how much uh, trigger time we need uh, to trigger the uh, microcontroller. So she's powering off, so I'll disconnect the power to the microcontroller. So now when I touch or tap the piezo speaker, you can see the LED. That's how much time I have to turn on the microcontroller. And the microcontroller will actually turn on itself. I have it disconnected right now, but that's, that's the time constant that we need to turn on the microcontroller. Okay, as a demo, I have my vandal proof switch connected up to my circuit. So if you want to install a switch onto your weatherproof box, this is a little demo how it works. So I have it connected. So when I press on the button, you can see it activate it. So I press the button, the power is on. Now I have it connected to the second FET, as you can see here, because inside the vandal proof switch, there's actually a voltage doubler and a FET already inside the switch. So we could bypass this uh, first uh, bit of circuitry and go directly into the second FET. And you just have to press the button and she activates the power. And then after 20 seconds, you can see the LED is blinking. And then she'll power off and there'll be zero current. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. 
Now you can see the piezo speaker right here. And the equivalent circuit is in this box. So it has a series capacitance to the piezo speaker. So the bigger the speaker, the bigger this capacitance. And if you look at the circuitry here, this is a voltage doubler. Now on a negative half swing of the piezo output, we're going to charge up this capacitor with plus on this side and minus on this side. And then when the piezo output goes positive, we're going to have a plus here and a minus here. Now these two charges are in series, so they're going to, they're going to double. So we're going to have a double V in at this point here, and that's going to charge up this uh, capacitor. Now the charge in the capacitor can't go out this way because it's blocked by the diode. can't go into the gate because it's high impedance. So it could only bleed through this 4.7 mega ohm resistor. So that's our time constant of our on time for this uh, FET, the 2N7000. Now when the FET comes on, the drain will go to ground. We'll have current flowing from the 9 volt battery through the emitter base junction through the 4.7 K ohm resistor and then to ground. And that small current through here will give a large current through the emitter collector which will feed the V in of the nano. So the nano will be energized and the first instruction that it will get is turn on pin 8, make pin 8 high which will turn on this FET, the 2N7000, and it's going to pull this to ground. So now this could, be, this could release, now this is going to keep it on. So now we're going to have current flowing this way through this uh, uh, MOSFET. So now the, the microcontroller has control because it's turning on this MOSFET. And after the idle time, pin, pin 8 goes low, it'll shut off uh, the 2N7000 MOSFET, will shut off the transistor, the power will be released from the nano, and we'll have zero current waiting for the next trigger on the piezo speaker. Okay, here's the demo code running on my Nano, and it's fairly simple. It's written in fourth. I'm using interactive Arduino. So the first word you see there is called blink. They'll blink the LED on pin 13 once. So pin 13 goes high for 300 milliseconds, and then low for 300 milliseconds. That's a one blink. Then I have a word called blinks, which is plural. So if I want five blinks, I just type five, then blinks, and I'll get five blinks. So this is my whole program here. It's called tap. So the first thing I do, I initialize GPIO pins 13 and 8 as outputs. Then the first thing I do, I make pin 8 high. So that's going to output pin 8 high, which is turn on the FET, which is going to give me power, feedback power back to uh, the V in. So that, that's my feedback loop. That's my latch circuit. That's going to um, latch on the power to the nano. Then I wait 20 seconds. That's my idle time. Then after 20 seconds is up, I'll do five blinks. Then I wait a second. And pin 8 goes low, which will turn off the power to the nano, and we'll have zero power. So in your pro project, right here, the 20 seconds, now whenever you don't get any input into your, into your circuit, into the code, uh, you have a counter, timer counter running, and every time you get an input, it resets the counter. So after an idle time of 20 seconds, the counter will run out, will overflow, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll shut down the circuit. So that's something you have to add. This is just a demo circuit. I just put in 20 seconds here just for demo. But in your code, uh, depending on your project, uh, whenever the counter uh, overflows to whatever you set it at, then it will shut down the circuit and pin 8 will go low and then we'll have zero current in our circuit. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on how to weatherproof your projects. Now that's the way I do it. There's probably other ways that are just as efficient, but I like using an impact switch to turn on my uh, projects so I don't have to drill any holes in my enclosures. Now also I'll probably get comments about the zero current when this system shuts off. Now all semiconductors leak so there will be leakage current. Now I measured the current when the power is off and I couldn't uh, get any readings on my standard uh, multimeter. Now if you use a special multimeter for low current you could probably measure the leakage current. So if you're paranoid about leakage current in the 9 volt battery using in your project you could probably go to lithium ion um, 18650 batteries with a 3000 milliamp hour capacity uh, then you don't have to worry about the small leakage current.